their faces for the first time after 10 days inside a dark space behind a collapsed tunnel in Uttarkashi. Imagine the exhilaration for the families of those 41 workers. We have felt that exhilaration seeing those faces. Imagine what their loved ones are feeling right now. I'm going to take you across. I'm going to show you those pictures and tell you what they mean in terms of the timeline before not just their faces, but the workers themselves emerge from that tunnel. I'm Shiv. This is Five Live. The headlines first. Storm over Prime Minister Modi's Team India video in the dressing room. Rahul Gandhi wades in, criticizes the Prime Minister. BJP hits back and demands an apology. India allies claim Prime Minister should have met the players outside. It's a big, epic meltdown by a triggered opposition. Center sounds alarm over spurt of deepfake videos. IT ministry to hold key meeting to tackle deepfake dangers on November the 24th. Congress chief hurls fake backward jibe at Prime Minister Modi, who is an OBC. BJP hits back, accuses Congress of harboring hatred towards Modi and the OBC community. Top court pulls up Punjab government under the Aam Aadmi Party over spike in farm fires, directs the Bhagwant Man government to stop giving MSP benefits to farm fire violators. Ekta Kapoor bags directorate award at the International Emmys. Veer Das wins big for his Netflix comedy special, Shefali Shah and Jim Sarg lose out. This award is for you, India, and all the Indians here. We are few, but we're enough. This is for you, India. It's taken 10 days for us as a country to get our first images of the 41 trapped tunnel workers. These are images that have been made possible thanks to a laparoscopic camera that was tunneled through one of the pipes to give us these first images of the tunnel workers. Images of them peeping in from the pipe. Images of them standing in that collapsed space after the debris cornered them into that area. For 10 whole days, their ordeal has been uh, a national story here on India Today. And now for the first time, it is our privilege to bring you these images of the 41 tunnel workers and the first images of what that space actually looks like. It's dimly lit. They're wearing their hard hats. They're still wearing their high visibility uh, equipment. But the tiredness, the exhaustion, the distress is writ large on each and every one of their faces. I'll be taking all their names in just a moment from now, viewer, but I wanted to show you these pictures because it has been 10 days, and at this point, we are still, we are told, at least three to four days from an actual rescue. So a camera has reached them. We're able to see their faces. They've been able to speak to their loved ones, most crucially, who are able to see their faces and communicate with them in real time for the first time in 10 days. But that rescue of these 41 men is still at least three to four days away. Let me quickly update you on the technicals, on the specifics of where things are at right now. I've just shown you how video contact has been established uh, with each and every one of those workers. Uh, this endoscopy camera has been sent through the pipe. It's a medical camera. It's been sent, sent through the pipe, and that's how we're getting these amazing images of uh, you, you know, our citizens, the 41 workers. It's a six-inch pipe that has been inserted right through the debris for communication. So food uh, and other things can be sent through that pipe, but not uh, it can't be used for rescue. So food, medicine, khichdi, and other things have been sent through that very same pipe that has been used for the camera. 800 millimeters, which is basically a little less than a meter in diameter pipe, is being inserted as we speak, along with a 900 millimeter pipe, which is 
almost a meter. These are the two pipes through which the two, uh, uh, the, the 41 workers will have to actually crawl through. So now we know that they are safe. There is visual proof that they appear to be physically completely okay. The big question now is how many days, really, they say three to four days, but how many days from now is this going to end in a full rescue? Here's the very latest that we have for you. No way out yet, but a slender six-inch pipe strategically threaded through the debris has provided a glimmer of hope. Captured in a semi-circle formation, a gripping 30-second video filmed through a medical endoscopy camera. Approximately a dozen men in helmets engaged in communication with rescue teams outside. The tunnel illuminated with functioning lights. A proverbial ray of hope for their loved ones on the outside. हाँ मैं तो रेगुलर बात कर रहा हूँ जब एक्सीडेंट हुआ है उसी टाइम से मैं पहुँच गया था और पर डे में बातचीत कर रहा हूँ वो भी ठीक है उसके साथ साथ जितने भी स्टाफ हैं अंदर में सभी ठीक हैं। Serving hot meals including rice and lentils sent to the trapped men. Until now. The workers sustained themselves on dehydrated food sent through a narrower pipe. Oxygen being supplied through a dedicated tube. An intense battle waged on multiple fronts. Navigating fragile terrain and contending with rubble on one side and grappling with emotions on the other. बड़ी सी खुशी और उम्मीद हुई आप लोगों को उनसे बात करके बात कि वो ठीक है। से... उसको मैंने बताया उसको पता है कि मैं आपका तो स्वस्थ चल रहा है नीचे से आपको लोगों को वही पाइप के द्वारा निकाला जाएगा Rescuers adopting an alternative approach after horizontal drilling vibrations triggered additional debris falls. Teams now constructing an access road to the hilltop from where they'll dig vertically. मेरे पीछे आप जो सतह देख रहे हैं ये वही हिस्सा है जहां आपको लाल झंडा दिखाई दे रहा है जियो सर्वे की टीम है जिसका सामान यहां पर है और यहीं से खुदाई होनी है दरअसल काफी तैयारी नीचे से दिया आपने सबको समतल कर दिया गया है यहीं से बोरवेल होना है यहीं से लगभग इक्यासी मीटर नीचे पाइप भेजी जाएगी ताकि उन मजदूरों तक पहुंचा जा सके वर्टिकल ड्रिलिंग सबसे महत्वपूर्ण परियोजना है ताकि नीचे अगर ऑल्टरनेटिव जो हॉरिजोंटल ड्रिलिंग से काम नहीं चलता है तो कम से कम वर्टिकल ड्रिलिंग के जरिए मजदूरों को बचाया जा सके rescue teams must dig 338 feet downward to reach the trapped workers simultaneously pursuing horizontal excavation maintaining the morale of the trapped men poses another significant challenge a comprehensive five pronged strategy at the silkyara tunnel hope and resilience converge tirelessly pushing towards a resolution with Ashutosh Mishra and Amit Bharadwaj from Uttarkashi Bureau Report India Today So we've seen the men in there we've seen how that endoscopy camera has been uh, you know inserted right up to where they are inside uh, that zone where they are trapped for the last 10 days now i want to show you how many different pipes have either penetrated through the rubble or are currently being attempted to be pushed through take a look at how this actually looks there are a multiplicity of pipes now supply pipe number 1 is just 4 inches in diameter it's a tiny pipe that's the first pipe that was used to send in water and uh, you know uh, basic food items now a larger pipe 6 inches in diameter 53 meters long is the pipe through which uh, khichdi and fruit and other things are being supplied so higher protein fruit now this Supply pipe number three is 90 meters long, 320 meters from the tunnel. This is also an emergency supply route through which food items is said to be uh, uh, planned to be sent to the pig. Now, the big challenge right now and the big focus right now is evacuation pipe number one. As you can see, it's a wide pipe, 900 uh, 900 mm, not m, 900 millimeters in diameter, which means it's nearly one meter in diameter. comfortably humans can crawl through it it is through this particular pipe that the rescue officials want 
all or at least some of the workers to be able to crime through. But apart from this, there are other, uh, uh, you know, j just as a backup, there are other evacuation pipes as well. Uh, there, there's this one, which is a 170 meter evacuation pipe. There are there's an evacuation pipe number three, which is also 320 meters distant, length is 90 meters, and 325 meters in is a evacuation pipe number four. So you've got four separate evacuation pipes. You've got three supply pipes at this point of time to try and ensure that every last man, 41 men inside that collapse tunnel make it out alive. So three supply pipes out of which two are currently active. None of the evacuation pipes obviously are active at this point of time. So let's get a word in from our reporters on the ground who've been fronting this story, giving this story a face and bringing us the very latest. Ashutosh and Amit uh, are on site. They've been there. They've been camping through the night as well to get us the very latest on this. Amit, quickly coming to you first. Day 10, uh, the big story, of course, today is that, you know, the families and all of us have been able to see the faces of those men. Uh, you know, given that, it, uh, you know, 10 days have, 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 have gone by in total darkness. We've not seen their faces. We've heard their voices, which has a very haunting quality of its own. To see their faces has brought some reassurance. Absolutely right, uh, Shiv. You know, those images uh, are really crucial images because uh, right in the morning I had spoken to the family members of uh, uh, one Virendra Kisku who's a labor uh, stranded inside the tunnel, his family members, his brother, uh, you know, a sister-in-law and wife Rajni. Uh, all three had spoken to India today and they were very, uh, you know, I, I could actually sense a sug of relief that they had after seeing those visuals. However, Viren's image was not visible in that particular uh, uh, video and image which had come out uh, in the first round uh, but they were saying that you know uh, we heard so far from the government that they are safe they are healthy now that we have seen the images our hopes are high our morale has increased and remember you know this is not only for the family members but also for the workers who are stranded inside uh, the fight is not only about uh, uh, being in a safer location right now you have to be in a right mental and emotional state as well and this particular communication channel which has been opened up uh, this will not only supply food food uh, uh, medicines but also uh, help in having a, a clear cut co uh, communication as well we have also accessed video in which we can see that you know family members of the stranded workers were allowed to speak to their uh, 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 these uh, workers so uh, this is a big day big development uh, you know uh, 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 communication channel uh, set up food supply set up you have uh, 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 endoscopy camera getting those visuals from inside and along with that family members being able to speak as well a quick word, uh, Shiv. Uh, you know, uh, there are several plans that you discussed right now, the rescue plans, but I've been also to Balkot end, which is the other end of the tunnel. And these uh, central agencies don't want to waste upon any option and opportunity that they have right now. They have already started the work of the backup rescue uh, tunnel as well. In case, unfortunately, of all these horizontal and vertical drillings that we are talking about, if all this fails, what happens? In that case, the backup rescue tunnel uh, is the done? only option, the safest but the longest option that will be left with the agencies. And that is being dug up in the in Balkot end, 3 meter in diameter, 8 meters of length has been already covered. The only problem in that plan is that in 24 hours of span, the agencies will be able to uh, go ahead with only 8 meters per day, which means, you know, if you have to go around 500 meters, it might okay. take uh, 2 months or so. Uh, but let's hope that you know, the agencies don't have to rely on that plan and uh, the, either the frontal, horizontal or the vertical drilling works out. Let's just, sure. Amit, uh, stay with me. Ashu, I'm going to come to you in just a moment. I just want to illustrate for our viewers, our graphic team has put together this simulated view of where that drilling is actually taking place from because most people are confused about what this crisis position actually looks like. Let me zoom in for you to show you where that drilling is taking place. The first big drilling is from the barcoat end. 450 to 480 meters horizontal drilling is needed at this point of time. That's the main rescue shaft that is currently being drilled for a 900 millimeter diameter pipe through which it is hoped that these 41 uh, workers will be able to crawl out of. There is a hilltop, hilltop 
vertical drilling required of about 89 meters. That's the uh, uh, evacuation pipe number two that I was showing you, through which, through the mountain, much more challenging. And then from the Silkiara end, which is the other end of the tunnel, 60 to 70 meters horizontal drilling is needed. So three separate evacuation pipes, all entering that cavern where these 41 persons are trapped is happening in parallel at this point of time. Let me bring in Ashutosh, who's been there first on site, bringing us all of those updates. He's been speaking to the top men of the rescue teams as well. Ashu, very specific question, and I know it's a difficult one because this story is changing every day, but we've been told three to four more days could bring a big, big breakthrough. What are you hearing? Could it be as soon as three to four days? Not less than that, Shiv, at least. So, because side drifting will take at least 10 to 12 days, and that has been announced by the Transport Secretary and Raj Jain just a few minutes ago in the National Capital while briefing the media. As far as the horizontal drilling right behind me from Silkara Tunnels concerned, it hasn't even started yet. The operation was uh, halted on 17th November, and the reason is that there are several reasons topographical reason, the physical condition, and also there have been, uh, being this seismic uh, region, there was also a light, mild tremor, and because of that, those activities, the first uh, you know, the uh, attempt was to first ensure safety of the workers which are already engaged in the ongoing rescue operation. So they had to first made a say, 40 meter long uh, my, minute channel inside this uh, uh, ongoing operational tunnel. So after only completing the safety point of that, only this pipe insertion and the drilling that will start. In fact, a uh, short while from now, there will be a press conference uh, from NIHL DLC where there will be more information. Even as far as vertical as we speak, Shiva, just a couple of hours ago, I made some attempt while tracking six kilometers from the alternative mountain to reach that particular point. The, you know, the terrain has been made totally flat, but there needs to be construction of a flat platform. Then the drilling machine will take place. As we speak, the ONGC team is also doing a recce all around of this area from the vertical position, from the side drift, and all the multiple options being explored. But along with the logistic supply, formation, construction, and remember, this is not just an ordinary boring you go and uh, bring some pipe and drill it. Do you need a proper uh, establishment, installation, mounting on the mountains, on yeah, the hills, yeah. and only then you start uh, drilling, only after due course of a survey and reports. So because of those are a time-taking processing, let me tell you, the fastest way and the only option at the moment looks like is the drilling, which is already happening right behind me, 24 meter, nearly halfway through, just, you know, after just crossing Amazing. the blockhead, which is already yeah. disrupting the uh, this machine, there will be a major a breakthrough but it will take at least two to three days only after the machine being operational it's uh, you know it the, the the number of challenges being faced and i think ashu you you did very well to explain that in detail because you know most people are wondering are ye to pahad hai, why can't you just easily drill through it and like amit was pointing out this drilling is extremely specialized there are rocks there is debris there is a danger of more debris falling where the, you know, where the workers are trapped. Let's never forget that that is also one of the risks. And that's the reason why this is an extremely precarious and very, very precise engineering task that is being undertaken. It's not simply that you push some pipes into the mountain and expect that the, uh, uh, you know, workers will climb out of there. It's sitting on a razor's edge. Uh, I'm going to come back to you, Ashu and Amit, in the course of our coverage. Thank you very much for the moment for joining me uh, here with the clarity on where things are at. Not less than four to five days before a rescue will take place. 41 laborers stuck in Uttarkashi waiting to be rescued. This is a human story. The tunnel rescue operations are on day 10. Five agencies are working around the clock in order to ensure that the momentum that they've had thus far does not slacken. Prime Minister Modi has spoken to the Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Dhami, taking stock at every hour, work to build the backup rescue tunnel from the barcode end has also started, like I demonstrated. And you've got all agencies continuing to drill from the Silkiara end after working safety arrangements. So three different directions in which drilling is taking place from each side of the tunnel as well as from the mountain top on which the tunnel is built through. For the first time after nine days, workers received a proper protein-rich meal on Monday evening. That's the good news, because vertical drilling is likely to start later today, through which 
more supplies will possibly be sent down. It's also easier, remember, thanks to gravity, to send equipment, batteries, battery chargers, etc., through that vertical tunnel. Sabi agencia or Sabi engineer, technician, business against Kam Melage, Unki Mehnat or Parisram say, change ki jo pipe hai, wo andar pahunch gayi hai aur usse ab bhojan aur sabhi prakar ki jo khadya samagri hai unke liye pahunch payegi nishchit roop se ye hum sab ko protsahit karne wali hai aur hum bhagwan se prarthna karte hain ki jaldi se jaldi ye rescue abhiyan pura ho hamare sabhi samik bhai kusalta se bahar aaye and one of the international experts most sought after for this kind of rescue is thankfully on site. He's been there for the last couple of days. You saw him on India Today first. But given how fast this story is changing, we've brought him back here on Five Live. Arnold Dix is president of the International Tunneling and Underground Space Association. And he's on site. He joins me live now. Arnold, thank you very much for being with me. As someone who's seen such tunnel collapses in the past and specializes in resolving such crises. What is your latest assessment of how things are looking? Yep. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me here. Uh, I've been on site now for 24 hours and I am very impressed with what I've seen. Uh, these conditions, as you know, uh, you well know, are the most extreme conditions on the planet. Uh, the, mm. the Himalayan mountains are quite uh, a dynamic and as you know, we, we know that with the effects of climate change uh, and the change in storm frequencies, these road linkages which are being put through these parts of, the, um, of your country um, are so critical because yeah. what, what we're seeing is that the change to the nature of storms and frequencies, what have you, is um, really disrupting even existing roads. So it's a, I, I really commend you on what you're doing with your, with your roads. If I can just turn to the emergency uh, this, this emergency is really serious, and obviously that's why I've come. Uh, literally a phone call, and I was here as quickly as I could. Behind me, although you can't see it, I've got the International Tunneling Association, 80 member nations. All of those nations have given their support to me. I've got a team of it's about 60 subject matter experts behind. We're busy doing um, whatever we can to assist the team here. And the team here is awesome. The team here understand the, the mountain better than any, anyone else on earth. And I have been shocked in a really positive way about the way the local state, the federal administration, the army, everyone just working together. And you're gonna see over the next uh, few days a real, um, uh, real consolidation of what we've been busy planning. And together, we've got some, some I think, terrific uh, news for you very shortly. Uh, and today, for example, we've got another one of these lifeline tunnels uh, has actually been successfully put in. So we've got two ways to get air, food, medicine, um, everything in. That gives us a big sigh of relief. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to you know, great, great progress moving forward. You know, Arnold, it, I, I can't tell you how, how good it feels to hear reassuring words from someone like you. Uh, you know, someone who has seen crises like this, these before, uh, you know, who belongs to the Tunneling Association uh, and has that, uh, you know, strength behind him. So for you to say, uh, you know, sound so positive, I can tell you uh, it means a lot, uh, not just to the families, but to everyone watching right now. I think it's one of the first... Uh, you know, unequivocal notes of uh, positivity and optimism that has been sounded. And from someone like you, someone as luminous as you, it means a lot. Now, you know, speaking about the specifics, Arnold, the effort to reach the workers is obviously the priority. Food's reached them. Like you said, another lifeline has reached them as well. Uh, the pipes, as we understand it, are being inserted, uh, one from the top and one from each side. In your view, with everything you know at this point of time, which method do you think will succeed? So I'm, I'm not sure if there's been an announcement about which methods are being deployed. I think that's being announced tomorrow. And if, if you tell me there's been an announcement, then I can talk to them. But if there hasn't been an announcement, it would be wrong for me to talk to them. 
I understand that. But, you, you know, anything, any light you can throw, uh, Arnold, on the challenges that are being faced. You know, like you said, since you've arrived there, uh, lots of different agencies doing, you know, an amazing job in a very, very challenging situation. Can you explain to us what the challenges are? Break those down for us. So I, if I can just talk to you about then generally the different approaches and why that you've got them there. And this is on the basis that what you've just asked me is public knowledge and has been released. So I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm, I'm standing here with a mountain behind me. I've got no idea what's happening. There's very poor communication here. So on the basis, what you're telling me is true. This is how I see it. For the rescue mission within the tunnel in the area that's collapsed, it's the most likely to occur quickly, but it also has a number of complications and dangers because what we've seen is that the tunnel has already collapsed. So on the one hand, it might be quick, but on the other hand, it poses some dangers because the mountain has already told us that it's not happy. The mountain has already collapsed in that area. So it's potentially quickest, but it's also risky because it's an area that's already unstable. And then if we say go to above the mountain, so today I went to the top of the mountain and I looked at the rocks there. The rocks there were fantastic. So for your viewers, it was as if there was a gift from nature in the rocks because exactly above the tunnel, exactly where, where the discussion is to do the vertical, um, the vertical grill, is this beautiful piece of rock perfectly suited to do this task not anywhere else it's like it's put there especially for the task and so uh, i thought this was an amazing thing so the the difficulty there is we have to drill down through a mountain and we have to aim exactly aim to hit the tunnel but we're more than like very high above the, the tunnel so if we get even out by one degree the vertical shaft might miss so the challenge there is we have to be very accurate and also it takes a fair bit of time. And then coming in from the side, which is another possibility, that is to come from the side of the mountain in, that's yeah. also possible. But the technology that we use for doing that is slow. So that also takes quite a lot of time. And we'll be going through ground that we haven't excavated through before. So that would be from the side. And then coming from the other end of the tunnel, all, all the way back around the other side, um, that's very sure because that's actually along the alignment that's been studied. And so we'd have a high degree of confidence in that, but that would take an even longer period of time. So all of these different options, they have a balancing of risk and they also have a question of time. And one of the things that I'm passionate about, and I know the whole team are as well, we want to, we're going to, we're going to rescue 41, we're going to rescue 41 men. We don't want to hurt anyone else in the process. So that's, that's our challenge right now. And as I say, today has been a good day. Yep, ask away. You know, your, your optimism is infectious, Arnold, and I, and I really commend you for that because, uh, like I said, it is so reassuring to hear someone like you say it. But, you know, uh, you're calling rock fantastic. It's easy to drill through or at least there are less challenges. But as these rescue uh, lifelines are being penetrated through all that debris, you know, what happens if there is loose earth? Is there a risk or of, you know, more debris collapsing in the space uh, that is being penetrated or in the place where the 41 workers are currently located? Is that a risk? Yeah, so in your mountains, in your Himalayas, they've been squashed and twisted. So imagine once upon a time they were flat and now they're all squashed and twisted. Hmm. So just by some miracle, exactly above the tunnel, exactly on the top of the mountain where the tunnel is underneath, exactly at that point, some rock has ended up flat and very hard rock sitting there so that uh -huh. we can mm -hmm. drill from that point down into the tunnel. This hard rock is nowhere else. It's just, it's sitting there. It's been twisted up and it's been put there in exactly the right location. And it's hard rock, like concrete hard rock. Whereas all the other rock that I've been touching at the mountain, and I go in and I touch it and I check it, because that's what geologists do, it's very soft. This is why it fell down. But this rock at the top of the mountain, exactly in the correct spot above the tunnel, it's, it's 
perfect for this job. It's perfect to build the machine to drill down to rescue the men. And finally, the, Arnold, the question that everyone's asking, and I know it's difficult because this is a, a, you know, a, this is a, a, a meticulous operation. There are many challenges. There are many things to take into account. Uh, you know, if, I, if you could throw me a number, how many days or weeks is this going to take before we see these men being rescued? I, I was in New Zealand for Diwali when it began. And so I danced in New Zealand for Diwali. And my understanding is these men would have been dancing for Diwali when they went in for work. I'm confident that they'll be singing Christmas carols for Christmas. What I'm not sure is exactly where between Diwali and Christmas they'll, they'll be joining us back here. Yeah. That I really don't know. It could be in a few days, it could be in a few weeks, but it will be before Christmas. So we've got two celebrations there, Diwali, Christmas, somewhere in the middle. Okay, D Diwali is over, but Christmas is ahead, and uh, uh, it's the first time we've heard something as definite as that before Christmas. You're hoping uh, all of this will be wrapped up, but that's an upper limit, which means anywhere between four to five days to, uh, you know, maybe another month is the possibility. I know that's a big range that we're talking about, but that actually is a manifestation of how complicated and uncertain things are right now. There are big challenges and variables ahead in terms of the progress that each of those evacuation pipes is taking. And that's why experts on the ground, you've heard from Arnold Dix, is giving you a range of anywhere between five days and 30 days. That is an expert analysis, and that is an indication of where things are on right now. Light at the end of the tunnel, literally, but we'll only call it that once those 41 men are fully rescued. It continues to be our top story here on India Today. A video of Prime Minister Modi doing what he does best, interacting with people, whether it is space scientists, whether it is people of the country, whether it is school children, whether it is Team India and the men in blue. This is what he loves doing best. And here was Prime Minister Modi in a minute-long video interacting with our men in blue, the heroes of Team India, who very sadly lost in the final after a spectacular spectacular World Cup campaign. The entire country is proud of them, disappointed, but super proud of Rohit Sharma, Virat, Shubman, and all of the others who Prime Minister Modi met. It's a beautiful video. You can hear the Prime Minister and his words of encouragement. Mohammad Shami, he meets him, takes his head to his arms, pats him on the back, shakes hands with all of the others, hugs them, a back slap, pep talk like an indulgent elder, what is wrong with these images? Well, you've got to ask the opposition because there's been an epic, unseemly, ugly meltdown by the opposition over what has happened in these pictures. But first, I want to play out this full video for you. You have to Thank <laughs> 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 तो गुजराती बोलतो है इसने थोड़ा थोड़ा तर तो घर से सो आप लोग बहुत अच्छी मेहनत की है चलिए होता है और साथियों को एक दूसरे को जरा हौसला बुलंद करते चलिए और जब आप लोग कभी दिल्ली आएंगे तो बैठूंगा आप लोगों के साथ now, you may dislike Modi, you may be a critic of Modi, you may be a rival of Modi, you may be a critic of the BJP. But seriously, viewer, I want to ask you, what is wrong with this video? That's the prime minister of the country. He's not, uh, you know, there as some representative of the BJP. He's the prime minister of the country uh, going there to 
basically commiserate and you know sort of just say some nice words of inspiration for a team that is visibly dejected a team that you can only imagine their crushing disappointment and he's there as an elder as the leader of the country to pat them on the back and say you've got nothing to feel bad about you were brilliant the entire country is behind you i am behind you i invite you to come to delhi come to my house and we'll discuss cricket aram se what for the worst cynic could be possibly wrong with a video of this kind well this is india we're a vibrant democracy and this is election season and therefore this video has resulted in an epic meltdown and a hissy fit for the ages courtesy the frustrated brigade among our political class notably people from the opposition parties who've had a variety of things to say from goal post shifting to petulance to sulking to the most ridiculously cynical barbs on something that the entire country has appreciated take a look at this spectacle for yourself aap log pura 10 10 game jeet ke aaye ho ye to hota rehta hai भाई देश आप लोगों को देख रहा है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोटिवेटिंग टीम इंडिया आफ्टर देर लॉस इन द वर्ल्ड कप फाइनल्स ऑन संडे हमें बहुत अच्छा किया है इस बार द न्यू वीडियो ऑफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स इंटरेक्शन विद द मेन इन ब्लू हैज ट्रिगर्ड अ पोलिटिकल स्टॉक कांग्रेस एम पी राहुल गांधी ब्लेम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर फॉर इंडियाज लॉस अपने हर एक भाषण में पहले नरेंद्र मोदी आते थे कहते थे मैं ओबीसी हूं याद है आपको याद है हा क्या पनौती 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 अच्छा वाला हमारे लड़के वहां पे वर्ल्ड कप जीत जाते वो वहां पे पनौती हरवा दिया The Congress has called the video a choreographed consolation by the master of drama in India. आप अपने खिलाड़ियों का मनोबल बढ़ाने गए थे पर वो खिलाड़ियों का मनोबल नहीं खिलाड़ी तनाव में आ गए जब वर्ल्ड कप सीरीज स्टार्ट हुई तभी इनको साथ बैठना चाहिए था उनको अपना बेस्ट ऑफ लक कहना चाहिए था चुनाव में जाके बैठ के जो केवल केवल और केवल सिरे लेने के लिए गए वो हार में एक बहुत बड़ा कारण है Shiv Sena UBT MP Priyanka Chaturvedi has also hit out saying that the players looked uncomfortable with the PM. Former cricketer and TMC leader who was also a part of the 1983 World Cup winning team slammed the PM for entering the players dressing room. So this is some place that should not be entered. and you like i've heard the bjp guy is saying ah he is the prime minister he can go anywhere fair enough but the prime minister of this country or a laborer of this country are not above the law once the laws are laid down by the icc after the match fixing issue that nobody apart from the players or the support staff can go in and that too with the camera the bjp says the interaction is an example of the prime minister's leadership who stood by the team when the chips are down is actually continuing the congress tradition of calling all abusive names of the prime minister we need to see what is the approach congress takes whether it is sports or whether in, in their hatred for pm this is another classic example as far as sportsmen are concerned whether it's the asian games the commonwealth games india has done spectacularly well because of the kind of support that uh, has been provided by the government of india true leader is somebody who stands by the team when the chips are down and that's exactly what the prime minister uh, did he deserves great kudos for it panoti panoti in this politically challenged election season even sports has become fair game aap log bahut achhi mehnat ki hai chaliye hota hai bureau report इंडिया टुडे और साथियों को एक दूसरे को जरा हौसला बुलंद करते चलिए and the war over that viral modi video in the dressing room is only escalating after rahul taunted modi at a rally in rajasthan 
the BJP has now hit back. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma has tweeted out a Priyanka Gandhi video where Priyanka Gandhi says it's Indira Gandhi's birthday. India will definitely win. So Himanta says, who is the bad omen now? Who is the bad omen now? Who is the panoti now as per Himanta Biswa Sarma? So this is the BJP's counter-attack on the Congress. Here, listen in to what the BJP has put out. When India in the same Indra Ji was the same as India. And she was so happy. She called the whole team to her home. Today is her birthday. We will win again. We will win again. And away from politics and into some real battlefields of the kind that I've been covering for so long, I wanted to show you these beautiful images, viewer, of a very crucial weapons test that took place today. What you're looking at in these pictures are an Indian Navy Sea King helicopter firing a naval anti-ship missile over the Arabian Sea. Let's roll that video so our viewers can see that missile being fired it's a glorious test and one of great significance because this is a missile of the kind that India has never operated before because India has operated many anti-ship missiles but this is for the first time that an indigenous anti-ship missile has not only been developed but brought up to this level of maturity where it has been fired from a helicopter as part of development trials. In a couple of years, it will be part of combat service. I want to go across and get a quick expert view from Captain B.K. Sharma. He's a former spokesperson for the Indian Navy and someone very well versed with the big strides that the Indian Navy and Indian uh, weapons complex has made to indigenize critical systems. Uh, Captain Sharma, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, these images are very meaningful, you and I both know, but do explain to our viewers why they are the first time India testing its own anti-ship missiles, sir. Good evening, Shiv, and good evening to your viewers. Uh, it's, it's a red letter day again for us. This is a combined effort of DRDO, that is I, I, RCI Imarat, yeah. Indian Navy, HAL, not to forget HAL, and I must also say that a uh, very big role played by Semilac, the guys who do the certification, airworthiness, and then final authorization. So it was, and it, it is going to, it is a harbinger of a change. Yeah. You, you know it, that we have been importing these missiles. So when the Seeking 42 came, or when it was the era of Harriers, or it is the MiG-29Ks, you know it, all the missiles are coming from abroad. But with this kind of indigenization and the confidence levels which India is now, you know, the strides which India is taking. Mm. So this is something which is going to change the whole game. We will have everything of our own. We will not have to depend upon anybody. And uh, it is just a beginning. Whatever uh, the missile, the naval anti-ship missile today is there, this is only going to improve, and I must uh, share with you and our yes. viewers that the next step will be for the Rafals. Mm. And we are also going to integrate this on the Romeos. So it's, it's, it's the common inventory which is going to come, and it is all coming from our premier laboratory, which is the Abdul Kalam Missile Complex at Hyderabad. So this right. is the premier lab, is RCI uh, Research Center, MRR which has done this great job and of course you can't take away the credit from HAL, Indian Navy and Semilac. A great day today and you can and see how clean the, the, the missile has left the chopper and then gone onto its trajectory and hit the target or whatever it was a truly, designed. A truly red letter day and like you said I think the most important thing apart from this being a very high quality uh, piece of technology and piece of combat technology is that it reduces India's dependence on foreign suppliers. This is made by Indian scientists, Indian engineers, and all of those agencies that Captain Sharma just mentioned, which means it is a true blue made in India weapon system with no help whatsoever from any other country. Captain Sharma, always a pleasure to get your wisdom on such red letter days as you called it. Thank you very much for being with me here.
Well, that's it on Five Live. But before I leave, I did want to tell you, viewer, that there's been a big win for India at the International Emmy Awards 2023. At the awards, filmmaker Ekta Kapoor was honored with the Directorate Award for her impact on the Indian television landscape. Veer Das also won for his Netflix comedy special. Sadly, Chef Ali Shah, Jim Sarb and some others lost out. But it's still a big, big day for India at the Emmys.